Thanks. Um, thanks very much. I can see we uh, have uh, quite a small crowd. Uh, quite a small crowd here. Uh, uh, look, I, I don't know whether I would uh, want to uh, ramp up my comments um, with the, uh, or, or I would classify uh, my contribution here really necessarily as a keynote address. I, I perhaps uh, want to focus on a few issues, and of course my. Uh, particular concern is regional development and as we are, uh, are well aware that um, mining is driving regional uh, development uh, uh, across the state is a major driver of regional development uh, from uh, green bushes uh, in the um, in the south um, all the way up to our fabulous new dysprosia mine and processing um, plant in the uh, out of Halls Creek. Uh, and uh, there's sort of massive opportunities um, being created uh, by a, a new fluorescence in, um, in mining um, and um, uh, particularly contributed to, but not exclusively, um, by the, um, the emergence of, uh, of the tech metals. Um, but of course our, our old staples of, uh, of gold and iron ore are, uh, are also important and are also, uh, also expanding. And we all know that we have these issues of, uh, of profitability and, and power generation is in, incredibly important um, for, the, uh, uh, for the competitiveness of our mining industry. Um, it is also um, extremely important uh, for, our, um, uh, for us to be able to engage in downstream processing. And uh, we have made it very clear that, in particular, in relation to those, uh, uh, to uh, our tech metals, to uh, to the lithium, to the dysprosium, uh, we really want to do all that we can uh, to maximise the downstream processing. Uh, in uh, an, uh, in the case of uh, of lithium, um, moving, of course, um, to uh, at, at a very early stage to refine to refining, um, but moving beyond refining uh, to cathode production and indeed battery production, and we can't see any reason why we can't do that. But obviously, um, the, uh, uh, the price of, uh, of metals, uh, sorry, the price of energy is a, is a key factor. So um, uh, in order to drive this um, a diversity in our regions, uh, we need to pull down um, power prices. Now, there's been, and we know particularly looking at the Pilbara, but not exclusively in the Pilbara, the model that has been um, promoted um, by many of the mining companies over many years is the standalone fossil fuel generation. Um, each warlord uh, wants to be in charge of, uh, of their own uh, of their the production of their own power, and uh, we you know we are told that this is absolutely important for reliability and stability. Uh, but we uh, take the view um, that uh, there are very very substantial mining operations around the world uh, that operate off grids. There are many very important uh, commercial uh, manufacturing operations. Uh, that operate off grids. We have our hospitals operating off grids. So I don't think that we should be accepting uh, that uh, that uh, old uh, sibboleth that uh, that we need to have these standalone facilities uh, in order to ensure uh, reliability and stability. We can do that uh, in a an interconnected system. And uh, now the model of that interconnected system obviously will change um, over time, but I think it is important for us to address this uh, to address this key issue and say that if we're going to drive down costs across the system, if we're going to allow uh, those opportunities for diversification in regional economies, if we are going to allow, for example, or to have some hope of, uh, of processing and doing real meaningful processing uh, and uh, indeed seeing the emergence of other industries in the Pilbara or in the goldfields, we are going to need to do uh, uh, something about uh, better integration into, um, into, into, a, 
into a grid. Now, we also, of course, the other issue, which is um, I can see from the papers, there's always a disadvantage when you come down, you haven't heard what everyone else has said, but quite clearly, um, uh, an important uh, second issue, but deeply connected issue, is the uh, incorporation of, uh, of renewable energy into that power generation mix. Uh, and there's no doubt that, uh, uh, that solar, in a pure sense, um, putting aside the issues of reliability in solar alone, um, that it is uh, very competitive uh, these days with uh, um, fossil fuels, as is wind. Um, so we need to be looking, and, uh, and this will only uh, increasingly be the case. So we have to look at how we can uh, develop all of these uh, systems together. And of course, we see as an increasingly important part of this whole, of this whole project of how we, uh, how we make renewables, uh, how we give re renewables um, their place in the sun, uh, is um, uh, the, uh, the issue of hydrogen. Uh, that um, uh, the ability for us to fundamentally uh, uh, operate a, a game changer uh, with the uh, introduction of, uh, of uh, green hydrogen uh, produced uh, by renewable energy used as a, uh, a, a used fundamentally as a uh, as a storage system uh, really does um, give us uh, a great deal of um, uh, of confidence that we are going to be able to get uh, a very uh, considerable degree of, uh, of renewable energy um, onto the system uh, without compromising the um, uh, th without compromising the reliability. Now I know, uh, and we're not talking about a system that is anything other than a hybrid. We've got, we will have, we've got lots of gas-fired uh, generation up in the uh, in the mix. But I think again, it is important for us to uh, to be uh, truly open uh, to the new possibilities of the technology. And I know there are uh, are many people that are, are wedded and 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 really give. Um, uh, an extraordinary um, status to the issues of uh, of inertia and the need to have large metal things whirling around to create the grunt uh, that is uh, going to the of, of the spinning reserve. Um, but I think we have to keep our eyes open uh, to what really the changes are in the system and the ability. Uh, for uh, large-scale storage uh, to uh, adjust and uh, uh, electronically uh, to these issues that have previously been thought to absolutely uh, demand um, that there be uh, an underlying basis of, uh, of spinning reserve. And um, with the very large um, battery, tel uh, Tesla battery, um, or Samsung Tesla battery, over in, uh, in South Australia, um, uh, there have been, uh, they, uh, you know, they have been able to adjust what they've been able to fi find, that they've been able to adjust those, uh, uh, those frequency variations more quickly through the battery than they could have through the uh, traditional spinning um, spinning reserve. Now, you know, obviously there's more work to be done on this, but I, I just know that perhaps often in this industry there is a, a, a weddedness to um, some very traditional concepts uh, that have been built up um, uh, over over time and 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 deeply held uh, deeply held views, um, but uh, I, I think we have to be and you know it is good for us uh, to be prepared uh, to reconsider those uh, those issues um, when we have uh, when there is evidence uh, that suggests to us that with uh, proper storage, be it massive lithium ion batteries or be it um, uh, the use of, uh, of, uh, of, of hydrogen as a, as a storage medium, that there is ways uh, that we can indeed uh, deal with it. 
But uh, I note from, I mean, the very fact of this um, conference is, is saying to us uh, that there is great interest here, and we know uh, that there are many mining companies now that are um, uh, incorporating uh, uh, certainly at least solar solutions into their, uh, into their into their energy mix, and we have had uh, many people um, coming through our door uh, that are increasingly seeing uh, hydrogen, whether or not it be the blue hydrogen from uh, generated from gas, or uh, or the green hydrogen from renewable energy, uh, seeing a really very considerable interest in um, in using that, and I think um, uh, we. Uh, uh, we, we as a, as a government, are wanting to seize the the new uh, opportunities with hydrogen, uh, understanding the important role that they're going to play as part of the whole renewable story, um, and uh, and also the role uh, that um, uh, hydrogen uh, may well have uh, as uh, an alternative uh, to natural gas in terms of uh, of exports um, to, and in particular countries like Japan and Korea, um, who are very keen on, uh, as I understand it, uh, using this both um, for uh, uh, standing generation, but also as a, as a transportation fuel. There is a, a view emerging in some countries that um, at 20 years down the, hence, uh, down the road when we've all got uh, moving towards electric vehicles, there might not be enough affordable lithium available for their country, so they're wanting to uh, look at um, really reinvigorating that hydrogen fuel cell technology that was um, uh, that was uh, considered uh, very important um, uh, ten years ago, and it became a bit unfashionable, but does seem to be reviving now. So we're um, we're wanting to make sure that we are on the uh, on the front foot here, both in terms of uh, the uh, the role that hydrogen will play in our uh, in our local energy production, but also uh, its uh, possible role as a uh, as a way of uh, of uh, transporting uh, energy uh, into um, into the future. So uh, late in August, we will be um, convening a. Uh, a major hydro hydrogen conference here, uh, and I do note that we have um, the chief scientist Alan Finkel, chief national scientist Alan Finkel, has agreed to be part of that. So we really want to ensure that uh, we seize this opportunity, and that with um, um, Minister uh, Wyatt and uh, his agencies that we are uh, absolutely ready and able uh, to position ourselves uh, to um, to deal with this. So we, um, we've got a number of, as a number of regional um, uh, projects. We are doing work uh, under uh, the leadership of Brendan Hammond, who is the chair of the Pilbara Development Commission. We're working on the feasibility of a number of very, very large-scale um, combined solar wind and hydrogen uh, projects that um, Brendan is of the view could uh, bring um, power prices in the Pilbara uh, down to around eight cents um, per kilowatt hour. Um, now that, uh, for perhaps some of the most uh, efficient um, users in the miners in the Pilbara, that would only be a, a modest reduction. But uh, for others, that would be a uh, a very significant reduction in their cost structures. Now. Um, we do know, in part, sometimes energy politics has been used. Um, some some uh, large producers would uh, be happier to pay a higher price as long as it made it harder for new entrants into the system. Hopefully, we've moved beyond that um, that phase, and we all want to reduce uh, cost, uh, knowing that uh, our uh, our competition is really um, uh, South America and um, and Africa. So uh, we um, uh, so that's one body of work that's going on, and we uh, note that um, Minister Ben Wyatt has uh, uh, 
uh, has announced that uh, there will be very significant regulatory reform uh, going on in the um, in the the uh, northwest interconnected system, uh, and uh, from 2020, so there will be um, increased uh, contestability. There are people that argue, well, perhaps we need a uh, a wholesale new system up in the Pilbara, but I think um, that whatever happens, we will see um, this uh, a, a massive impact now from from solar, wind, and um, and and hydrogen as a very very uh, potent uh, a, a very potent mix. Um, we are do similarly. We're doing work in um, in Kalgoorlie. Uh, now that's a, a more complex system because that is on the uh, on the southwest interconnected system, uh, which is a constrained system, and that, uh, sorry, it's an unconstrained system. I always find the logic of these things because it seems to me that the unconstrained system produces very constrained outcomes. Um, uh, but uh, Minister Wyatt has also uh, indicated. Uh, that that will change from uh, 2022. But in the meantime, we need to be looking at uh, what we might be able to do uh, to help facilitate um, large-scale solar production uh, that will drive the mineral, uh, mineral processing um, and um, make uh, our mines um, more, um, more competitive. Not that I'm saying that we want to do that so they can pay a gold tax, but um, we would like to help them uh, become um, become more competitive and to make sure uh, that some of those um, smaller deposits uh, can be successfully mined. So I think it is, we've really got to, I guess my uh, messages here is we've got to get beyond this, uh, this looking at um, uh, uh, all of these uh, standalone facilities and and this fear of uh, lack of control um, of being on a um, on a grid, uh, we really need to look at. Um, uh, we need to really be uh, uh, prepared to accept uh, the full potentiality of uh, of this new system uh, once we have got adequate uh, adequate storage um, be it battery be it hydrogen or um, molten salt that once we have that capability the ability to uh, for us to electronically deal um, with this reliability of frequency and I know many people get up and say well, that's just completely terrible and we are going to keep needing those metal things but I think over time uh, we uh, there'll be ex increasing comfort uh, with that change uh, we of course are also one other uh, uh, prospect that I or two other pr proposals perhaps that we should be looking at is um, is also bio, biofuels, and although I think what we're we're really looking at um, the use of uh, of surplus um, biomass, we've mapped uh, the state, um, working closely with the Commonwealth and Geosciences Australia, trying to work out where we have uh, excess biomass, and the feedback that we're getting is that there are many many prospective opportunities here. Uh, but uh, in for biofuels, uh, but that the message seems to be that uh, perhaps it's not so much for the uh, direct uh, generation of electricity that this actually forms uh, becomes the most useful uh, format, but in, indeed as a uh, as a source of uh, of transport fuel, helping us drive down uh, emissions and costs. Um, and finally, of course, in the very south of the state, uh, we are looking at wave energy. And I understand, I believe, uh, that Carnegie are here today. Um, we are looking at, uh, we are investing in wave energy and in particular, um, working with the Great Southern Development Commission, we are very interested in the prospect if uh, we are to, uh, un, uh, to develop the magnetite mine at, uh, at Wellstead, uh, that that is indeed something that uh, may indeed um, be uh, uh, powered, at least in part, um, by, um, by wave energy. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you here. And uh, we think that this is a very exciting development. We are very enthusiastic that miners are really coming on and seeing uh, that there's a new energy story to be, uh, to be told, and we want to uh, work with you to achieve that. Thanks very much.